Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of ERT. My name is Derek. And I'm Kara. So today we're going to do something a little special. We're going to do what I'm calling the roller coaster showdown. So we're going to be pitting roller coasters against each other. And today we're actually going to be focusing on Rocky Mountain Construction, everybody's favorite manufacturer. Well, maybe not my favorite, I know like <laughs> Intamin, but so everybody yeah, else's. We're going to focus on what I'm calling like the mid tier RMCs, which is kind of unfair, but we're pretty much going to be excluding Iron Gwazi <laughs> and Steel Vengeance from this list. But. Because let's be honest, Steel Vengeance would just win. So <laughs> yeah, so we have four categories. There's eight roller coasters. Uh, each one are going to compete in their own categories. And then we're going to the two those four will fight against each other. And then we'll have our final two. Okay, sounds good. So before we get into the showdown, though, <laughs> we do have a little announcement. So we have just started selling t shirts. Yay! If you like the shirt that I'm wearing or the what shirt Kara that has I'm on. wearing, pretty much any of the shirts that we have worn in recent ERT episodes. Like, I say Derek has his X Screen Thrills one. I also have an X Screen Thrills one just like his. And then the first name basis with every coaster in this park, I wore this last week. And I guess a couple of people actually commented and said that they liked my shirt. Thank you. I designed it. So yeah, now it's available for purchase. If you want another way that you can support our channel, just go ahead, check out the t-shirts. We have the store will be available in the link in this video. Go check it out. See if there's something that you like. And uh, shipping is also included in the shirt. So just a uh, okay. We made everything with free shipping just to make it easy. We've been working on these for a couple of months now, testing out different things. We tested out a couple of different types of t-shirts and these were the ones that we came up with that we liked the best. We thought they were the best quality. They're really soft. Obviously we've gotten samples of them. We've worn them, we've washed them and they, they wear really, really well and they're soft. They're the the Bella Canvas brand, which I have other t-shirts in this exact same brand. So I know that it's a really good t-shirt. So we're excited. Yeah, so check it out. So, all right, let's get <coughs> into this showdown. So the first one that we got here is Twisted Timbers versus Storm Chaser. And I'm calling this the inversion drop category because they both start off with that barrel roll drop. So uh, yeah, so between those two, this is actually a, a pretty good one because I, I would like both roller coasters. I say I like both of these roller coasters. Too. My first experience on Storm Chaser in 2020, I thought it was amazing. And then we rode it again in 2021 and I thought it was even better. Mm -hmm. However, we've been on Twisted Timbers every year since then. And I feel like that coaster just continues to get better and better every year, faster, more aggressive. Uh, I think that's one of the best RMCs out there. Uh, so, well, it's just like I said, some of the highlights of Storm Chaser. It has some great inversions. I like its zero G roll. Obviously, the first inversion, the drop, is really exciting. The airtime moments are fantastic. It has a couple great just straight up airtime hills. I just full on ejector. Okay, now listen. I'm partial to Storm Chaser. Do you know why? <laughs> and why is that? It's very selfish because you can actually photograph Storm Chaser and take photos and videos of it. Whereas Twisted Timbers is pretty much, you can't see the coaster. Unless at you're all. in the line. Yeah. Unless you're in the line and they will not let you. However, I did get special permission, which is why I had the, some of the footage. That I did. So. <laughs> but they won't really, they. You have to talk to them. It has to be a slow day. It has to be special permission. You just yeah. can't take your camera back into line. You could use so your it's, cell phone. It's really hard to document Twisted Timbers, whereas Storm Chaser, you can see pretty much the entire coaster. So I like Storm Chaser for that reason. Okay. But Twisted Timbers, though. Everything else about that roller coaster has a ton of airtime. Uh, the inversions are great. I love that cutback element, like the halfway point of the ride. There's a couple crazy, quick little snappy outer bank turn there. It's like closer, getting closer to the end of the ride. I say, I think my favorite part is like, I, I don't know what it's called, but you dive through the structure and you feel like you're going to hit the yeah. top. It's like a near miss. And that is that always catches me off guard. And it like yanks you to the right at the same time. That ride only has right turns, by the way. <laughs> Fun fact, I guess. Fun fact. So, I mean, my pick is going to be Twisted Timbers. I would agree. So, I guess that's easy enough. We really like Storm Chaser, but Twisted Timbers, Twisted Timbers Twisted is going to move on. Twisted Timbers. All right. So, the next one we got the Cyclone category because we got <laughs> Twisted Cyclone versus Wicked Cyclone. We will not mix these Six up. Six Flags at all. is super creative with their name. We rode Wicked Cyclone. Most recently. 
No, uh, that's not true. Twisted? No. no. Wait, now, see, I told you. Yes, Twisted Cyclone is at Six Flags Over Georgia, Georgia. which we you rode, we rode in this year. 2023. 2023. And we have not been on Wicked Cyclone since 2019. So, yeah, we do have Twisted Cyclone fresh in the mind, but I do remember quite a lot about Wicked Cyclone. I, say, I remember Wicked Cyclone pretty Yeah, good. it's a great roller coaster. There's a lot of fun moments. I think the most standout <clears throat> moment for me is it has that really weird outer banked turn. It's not really as much of an airtime hill, like, like say, like the massive outer bank turn you got on Steel Vengeance. It's just like this weird turn that you're facing the opposite direction. It's, it always sticks out <clears> to me, but... It's kind of almost like a mini, mini Steel Vengeance, the way like this mm-hmm. third lap, because the ride goes around three times, I believe, and that third lap, you're just underneath the structure the whole way. So. Yes, which is what I remember about it and remember really loving about it is just being inside of the structure and being like, where are we going? Yeah. In a Twisted Cyclone, I think its biggest ding everybody says about it is the ride is on the shorter side, which it is. I think according to the stats that I looked at, it's one of the shortest RMCs by far. Like, it might be the shortest, maybe just behind one of the single rail coasters. I mean, just ahead of the single rail coasters. But I think it has a bunch of fantastic elements, and I really love that wave turn on Twisted Cyclone. That's one of my favorite elements there. How many times did you ride Twisted Cyclone? I only got to ride it once, though. I only got to ride it once. Yes. And Wicked Cyclone, we we got to ride that a few times. We did ride that a few times. So there's my, that. See, my overall experience with Twisted Cyclone is slightly tainted, though, because I got stapled harder than I have ever gotten stapled on a ride. That ride attendant, like, smushed the crap out of yeah, me. Yeah, she was, she she really liked this, because she really stapled me, too. But I guess I didn't really, you know, getting stapled on RMC, I know somebody can debate me on this one. I don't think it's that big of a deal, because I still feel like I experienced the full insane ejector oh, airtime. Oh, not the way she stapled me, man. But, it was so bad. It was terrible. I literally felt like the restraints were as tight as when you're coming into the station with Sky Rush, okay? okay? And you're literally like, please, 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 please release the restraints because you're just dying. That's how I felt going out of the station. So that was pretty tight. It was very tight. I mean, thankfully, so, I, I never felt like I was going to fall out of the roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, sure, there's that, but... The experience of it, though, I, I mean, I still think it's a very solid coaster. It's still a fun roller coaster. It, it, it could probably go around another lap, too, but it doesn't. And it kind of wraps up while it still has some gas left in the tank, as it were. As for Wicked Cyclone, I felt like it was sort of sputtering along there at the end. However, I hear that it's running a lot faster now, so it's kind of mm. hard to say. But we can't use that really into our comparison because we haven't experienced it in that speed. Maybe we should go back. Yeah, exactly. We need to go back to New England at some point here. Soon. But, I mean, I'm still going to lean towards the direction of Wicked Cyclone. I just think it's the fuller package as much as I like Twisted Cyclone. I think Wicked Cyclone is a little better. I would agree. So, two for two right off the bat. We both agree. Uh, So, uh, Wicked Cyclone is going to move on. All right. So, our next category is going to be the quote-unquote wooden roller coasters. (laughs) We got Lightning Rod at Dollywood, and we got Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. Mm -hmm. And the more I think about it, this is actually a pretty tough battle. I think the first response for many is a jump right to Lightning Rod. However, I feel like that coaster has just been going downhill and next year it will be operating without the launch. Right, so so it'll be a completely different different experience. Yeah, now, however, I'm still gonna kind of include the launch as part of my, my analysis because, well, that's how we've experienced it. So far. So yeah, Lightning Rod, it has the gray launch, though, I don't, I don't know. I felt like this year was, it was kind of the slow side. I don't know. You thought the launch was slow? It's okay. It's not like, I feel like back when we rode in 2020, like you had a little bit more speed going over the top of the hill. And now I feel like you just barely crawl over that first hill. I didn't have that feeling, but I, I had great rides on Lightning Rod in 2023. I know you didn't. I only got to ride it once. It broke down before I got on the second time. Oh yeah, it broke down right while you were ready to get on. Yeah. It was such a bummer. But, I mean, obviously it has that fantastic wave turn. I love that element. You know, I mean, it kind of does a bunch of those like crazy snappy like outer bank airtime hills. And obviously the quad down at the end is just insane. It's just super intense ejector moment after ejector airtime moment. And then you go into that quick snappy banked turn right into the brakes. I say lightning rod, it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier until you slam into the station. Yeah. 
As for our little run, I think it has the better first drop off the lift hill versus that first drop on lightning rod. I think it's a little bit more sudden. You get a little bit more ejector airtime, especially in the back row. I like that crazy, weird, extreme overbanked inversion. I don't know whatever it's really called there at the beginning. It's like almost like a step up under flip or whatever the heck they want to call it. <laughs> I don't remember. You have to look it up. Totally but good. that's, it's just a super fast, snappy maneuver. Some great ejector airtime. And I love the double barrel roll yes, at the end of the ride. That is the best. So good. And when it comes to like the roughness, I feel <clears> like <throat> both of them are almost on the same playing field. Now, Lightning Rod did receive that partial track work. So there's parts of the ride that's better, but it still has some of those nasty potholes scattered throughout it. And kind of the same thing with Outlaw Run. There's yeah. just a couple spots that you hit that are just... You brace. Yes. You brace They're, they're just <laughs> not comfortable. I really just know how to put it. They're just not comfortable at all. They both, though... It's a really good pairing, though, because they both like go out and disappear out into the woods. Yeah. And you have no idea where you are or what's going on. You can't see the coaster from the park and they're just out there. I think they're going to be even more comparable this coming year with the launch on Lightning Rod. I think they're going to feel very similar mm -hmm. moving forward. How do you think the launch is going to go? I mean, do you think it'll make the li the ride more reliable? Do you think, I mean, because that's obviously the... The point. Yeah, they said they're doing like a high speed chain lift, whatever the heck that means. I just assume a typical chain lift, maybe a little bit faster. But do you think know. it'll actually help? I, I think so. I mean, I'm assuming that's the, if that's their main issue is a reliability on the launch, then yes, I think this should help with the reliability. The question is, will they end up retracking the rest of the roller coaster? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I like the launch on Lightning Rod. Don't get me wrong, because it's awesome. But I don't know. I mean, if you take it out, I don't feel like it really affects the rest of the ride. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, as what I heard back in the day, the, the, the launch on Lightning Rod was really powerful. You know, it was great. And I thought it was oh, pretty mean, good in 2020. You mean like when we were there and it was supposed to open and it didn't what, open? 2016. Like, yeah. Uh, it's opening year. <laughs> yeah. I'm still going to lean in the direction of Lightning Rod because I think it just has a lot better airtime moments throughout the whole ride. And obviously the quad down is fantastic, especially now with the, the retrack. I think it's a lot more smooth. It is. As much as I love some of the elements on Outlaw Run because it has some really great elements. The I, ending. Yes. So good. I still think Lightning Rod is a better coaster. What do I you wish think? that I could photograph the ending of Outlaw Run. Like, yeah, you can just get like a quick little snap. You can't of really the see final it. Barrel roll. But, yeah. Oh man, if you could just stare straight down it. You could say that with a, well, so that's the good. same thing with Lightning Rod. You cannot those two coasters. You just cannot you can't photograph. see them at all. No. So I'm going Lightning Rod. Where are you going? I would go Lightning Rod too. I like well, Lightning Rod. I like Lightning Rod more than you like Lightning Lightning Rod. So I'm kind do. of I'm kind of surprised by you. Yeah, I, I just, judging over it, I still think it's a better coaster. We can fight the next one. Okay, so <laughs> our next one is the new for 2023. We got Wildcats Revenge at Hershey Park and Airy Force One at Fun Spot America. And let's just start off with Wildcats Revenge. That one has got a lot of attention this year, I think. Everybody, it's really been kind of like the fan favorite for of 2023, good, yeah. Yeah, for, for good reason, though. I mean, it has excellent pacing, some fun maneuvers, great airtime moments. The ride, especially the second half, it feels like it gets faster and faster as you work your way towards the brake run, which which I think is cool. Mm -hmm. I, I said, right as soon as we rode Wildcat, I said that it was the best paced RMC, just because it never quite lets up. Yeah, and... I mean, yeah, I think it's a fantastic paced RMC. I don't know if it's the best, but it's pretty darn close. Well, and it's it's a long ride. I mean, it's not like long, not Steel Vengeance long, but it feels like it doesn't feel like it's too short. You don't come rolling back into the station and feel like oh, you don't feel it. like you got gypped, and you also don't feel like the ride overstayed its welcome either. Right, it's the perfect length. Yeah. Now, Airy Force One. I feel like this is a coaster that. It did get a lot of attention. It got then a lot I, of hype. I feel like it got a, a lot of, uh, then it just sort of kind of got overlooked. And I know, I think a lot of people are maybe underserving it because of its location. It's at like at this, I hate to say it, but it's kind of a dingy, uh, like, 
<laughs> Ranky Fun dink. Center, whatever you want to call it. Yes. The rest of the rides there, I'm sorry, are they look like they're on their last leg. And then you have this massive, brand new steel roller coaster. <laughs> it's so strange. However, it's amazing because the fact is you can go and ride it almost as many times as you want. I thought it was a fantastic roller coaster. It has some excellent elements. Like the first drop is great. The dive loop is pretty cool. It has that massive zero G stall. And that's, I mean, Wildcat's Revenge has a zero G stall, but the one on Air Force One is so much better. It has that pretty decent sized outer bank turn, which Wildcat's Revenge doesn't really have that kind of an element. It is different. And then it just has some punchy airtime hills and that low to the ground <laughs> barrel roll, which is like you do this insanely fast barrel roll. Like you feel like it, you shouldn't be going that fast with that inversion, but it's, I think it's so much fun. And then it also offers some positive G-forces there in that, that turnaround section, which is unlike most RMCs. A lot of RMCs don't really focus on much positive Gs, but this does have a little bit there. It's not insane, but it does have some. I know a lot of like to complain about the end because it does have some strong, punchy. Uh, punchy. Kind it's of a like, good word. It's kind of like the... Uh, it's like the ending on Steel Vengeance almost is kind of like that, except this one really slams into the brakes and stops you pretty sudden. And it is a little bit jarring, but I, to me, it didn't really bother as much. And I don't know. So you haven't said much about Air Force One. What uh, do you think? I, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about Air Force One, simply because the second time that I wrote it, the ride attendants just didn't care at all about the people riding. And the guy in front of me had his cell phone out and he was just holding it. And he was held it in his hand as she was re as they were checking the restraints and they didn't care. And he was very clear that he was going to videotape the entire ride. And he did. And literally the entire ride, I wrote it like this because I was like he is gonna let go of his phone and it's going to smash into my face and break my nose like it just is I because it was the second time I had ridden the ride so I knew what to expect and I was like this guy has no idea and we he did somehow he held on to his phone the entire time but we came rolling back into the station his kid was crying because the ride was so intense and his kid had no idea what to expect it was such a weird experience. It's a very intense roller coaster for that park, for sure. Oh, yeah. And clearly, unless you're there as a roller coaster enthusiast, the people who are getting on this ride have no idea what they're strapping in for. I mean, no clue. We saw so many kids crying, rolling back into the station. It was almost comical. Yeah. I mean, I've been on Wildcats Revenge more than I've been on Air Force One. So I do have the, I guess, the more the experience of Wildcat's Revenge. But at the end of the day, I still think I prefer Air Force One because I think it has, I just enjoy the elements on it, especially that low to the ground zero G roll. That's something that Wildcat's Revenge does sort of try to go for, but it's near the end of the ride. So it's just not the same. And there's a couple moments on Wildcat's Revenge that I feel like everybody sort of glosses over that <gasps> I find more jarring oh. than I would say that on Air Force One. So there's that final little whip right into the brake run. You really got a brace oh, for yes. And then also that uh, it's like that, it's that airtime hill, but it's a it turns to the left and it's not banked. It gives you some laterals in airtime. It's okay, but if you're not really bracing for it, it's kind of a little <laughs> jarring too. So I, I, to me, I prefer Air Force One. Isn't that the theme of like every RMC though? If you're not bracing for certain elements and certain moments of the ride, you're getting thrown. It, <laughs> that's well, just yeah, how you, they you are. You gotta be an active rider on Rocky Mountain <laughs> yes, construction. Yes, an active rider. That's that's a good way to you put it. You can't just be moseying around or something. <laughs> I, I like Wildcat's Revenge. I, I thought you were gonna talk about how as soon as you come out of the station, it does like, I don't know what, what you call that. The, yeah, like, like the, the little -lift. bunny hops yeah. before. Yeah, it's that kind has of, a better pre-lift than uh, Air Force One. It's Air kind Force of One like what... It's for the lift. It's kind of like what Steel Vengeance does, but it does them better. Yeah, it's a better because you kind of dip down the side of the hill as you yeah. turn around and hit the brakes. Uh, it's hit the, so uh, much fun. Brakes, but, yeah, the lift. It's so much fun, and you haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> and if the ops are doing very well, you will have this quote-unquote dueling moment, <gasps> as everybody likes to call it. It's You're going so up good. the lift, 
and the other train will be flying through the zero G roll it's right above. So you. good! It is pretty cool to watch it happen. We, we had it happen to us. A I say times. we had it happen to us a couple of times because yeah. the first night that we were there, the ride ops were just on point and killing it. And the first time it happened, I totally freaked out. And he was like, "What are you?" Doing? Yeah, as versus the ride ops on Air Force One is pretty slow, but again. <laughs> It doesn't really matter because there's nobody there. So if you have to wait five minutes, sure, it's more than waiting like 20 minutes or 30 minutes on Wildcats Revenge, even though they're really hustling the people through. But so Wildcats Revenge also has the much better locker system because they does. actually have a locker system. So I, you're honestly, not going to get hit in the face. I don't even know what Air Force One has because I don't think they have anything. Think about it, but <laughs> I think oh, they, have they have like they a have cubby holders up in the station. Yeah, you walk so, through the train and yeah. you put your stuff against the wall. Yeah, so they have that, which works just fine. If if you want to, I guess, or you can just take it with you. You know, <laughs> yeah. I know. Okay. You're not supposed to, but who knows. <laughs> So I, I like Wildcats Revenge. I think this is going to be our first coin toss because I'm going to go with Air Force One. So will you be wrong? I will let you pick which, would you want heads or do you want tails? I want heads. You want heads. Yes. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> ah! Wow. All right, it's still here. Good job. As it bounced everywhere. We got heads. <gasps> yes! Boo. So Wildcats Revenge moves on. So Clearly. Our top four, we got better. Wildcats Revenge, Lightning Rod, <laughs> Wicked Cyclone and Twisted Timbers. Oh, this is really good. This so is going to be really hard. We're going to jump over to the left side. So Twisted Timbers versus Wicked Cyclone. Okay, let me think about this for a second. Wicked Cyclone. I have to make sure that I have the right Six cyclone Flags, in New my England. brain. Yes, got it. The yeah. better one. <laughs> but to me, this is a no-brainer. Twisted Timbers is better. I think it is. Uh, I, I mean, I have the benefit of riding it a lot more, and it's been right. four years since we've been on Wicked Cyclone. And Twisted Timber just keeps getting better and better to where I think it's like one of the best RMCs out there for sure. Well, and I feel like their ride That is ops, the coaster to beat for me today is I really like Twisted Timber. I feel like their ride ops get better and better too. Like I feel like they get, they're they're on yeah, point. Kings Dominion knows what they're doing. I, I think the park, I, I really enjoy Kings Dominion. I think they keep improving every year that we go. I, yeah, I agree. It's a beautiful place. As versus Wicked Cyclone, it's a great coaster. I just don't think it holds a candle to Twisted Timbers. Yeah, I think I would ultimately agree. All Although right. I well, like Wick, I like I like Wicked. Cyclone. Yeah, we do, and maybe our opinion will change the next time we write it. I don't know, but for now, Twisted Timber is is Move moving on. on to the finals. All right, so we got Lightning Rod versus Wildcats Revenge. Oh, well, see, this is rough because I mean, this is not. I really like Lightning Rod. I do really like Lightning Rod, but I also really love Wildcats Revenge. See, when we are a bit debating a Lightning Rod versus Outlaw Run, as much as they have fantastic moments and I can respect what they are, they're amongst some of my least favorite RMCs because I just think they're too rough. That they're just, you, once you ride a, a couple times, they can give you a headache or something. So to me, this is an easy, easy pick. I would rather ride Wildcats Revenge all day long over riding a Lightning Rod. Okay. Even though Lightning Rod has some great elements, I still think Wildcats Revenge is more enjoyable. Though I really, really <coughs> like that quad down. So that doesn't yes. make it tough because that quad down is a great element. But I can totally understand what you're saying by like the rewritability because you can only ride Lightning Rod so many times in a row before you have to take a break. Yeah. And if I, if I were to transport back in time to like 2020, when I thought that coaster was running really good, I thought it was uh, pretty smooth. I thought it was the very airtime smooth. I thought the airtime moments were fantastic. And we got to ride quite a lot. And that was just like one of my favorite roller coasters ever. And then coming back this year, and I was just like, wow, this is really taking a... What happened? Yeah. What happened? Really went downhill in a way. Why Literally downhill. <laughs> but I'm... Which is a shame because I, I still think it's a fantastic coaster and I don't think the jury's out on it yet. It's I think that park is going to continue to invest in it just as we've seen with like Thunderhead. They keep reinvesting into that yes. coaster, making it better and better, which I thought Thunderhead was more enjoyable riding this year than Lightning Rod. That's just my my little hot take. <laughs> We did have we did have good rides on Thunderhead this year. And I that's that's a great point. Like Dollywood will keep after it and keep maintaining it and like especially with them replacing the the lift and everything, like they're really trying to make this coaster Oh yeah. Great. I mean they again. invested quite a lot of money in it. Yeah. <laughs> Making coasters great again. No. <laughs> 
Exactly. So, oh, I make a t-shirt. Yeah, there you go. Wildcat's Revenge <laughs> or Lightning Rod, I'm going with Wildcat's Revenge. Yes, I would go with Wildcat's Revenge as well. So, it's, starring it's Lightning so Rod, good. you have too many problems, you're getting bumped. So we got Twisted Timbers versus Wildcat's Revenge. Yeah. Um. So... I mean, to me, my answer I already know is Twisted Timbers. I, I think I already said that. That's the coaster for me to be. Oh. I really enjoy Twisted Timbers. I think it's a fantastic roller coaster. I love all the elements on it. Uh, it gives you a ton of, ton of airtime. Sure, Wildcat's Revenge has a little bit more variety, and I do like that. With It has a couple more inversions. Uh, I think it's a couple more inversions, but I really like the cutback inversion on, <laughs> on Twisted Timbers as well. So... See, I lean more toward Wildcat just because of I feel like Wildcat is more rewritable. If we're going to talk about rewritability, we rode Wildcat a whole bunch of times in a row. We've also ridden Twisted Timbers a whole bunch of times in a row. And I feel like at the end of both of those, I could get on Wildcat again and Twisted Timbers. I'm like, eh, let's let's move on. I mean, I would kind of disagree on that. It was somewhat. Twisted Timbers, is, I think, is a lot more aggressive than It's Wild definitely Cats more Revenge. aggressive. So, yeah, you might have to take a break because it just really likes to beat you up in a way. Not like, it's not rough or anything. It's butter smooth. But it's some, of those, smooth. some of those elements, it's it's like riding a bronking, uh, yeah, a bucking bronco. Yeah, that's, what I'm that's to say. a good way to put it. Yeah, it's crazy roller coaster. Uh, Wildcat's Revenge. Great ride, but after riding it that one day for like three or four times, I was kind of like, okay, like I'm ready to move on. Really? See, I could just ride it all day. So uh, we're really not going to come to consensus on this. No, one, because is, I'm still going to say, well, I think Wildcat's Revenge is better than Twisted Timbers. And I definitely like Twisted Timbers. So we have to end it with a coin toss. Is, is really that fair? I guess so. I mean, that's that's the only way that's going to win it. So. <laughs> We're going to let uh, Two-Face decide. So <laughs> are you going with heads again? I'm going with heads again. Heads again. Woo! Because oh, it flies wow. all You're across. such a good coin toss. And <gasps> tails. That means Twisted Timbers win. <laughs> I, Sorry, that all you Wildcat Revenge. That was... Oh, it was totally rigged. Yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a double. Uh, it said it would be what, two heads or something, but it's not. Nope. On the other side, we got... A tree. Connecticut. So <laughs> it's Connecticut. Yeah, sure. Quarter. So sorry, all you Wildcats revenge lovers. I think Twisted Timbers is better. Except it's not. But you know, that's okay. You can you can you can pretend like you want. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess tell me in the comments what you think of this little battle, if you liked it, and if you didn't like it, I guess we won't do it again, but I thought this was fun. Or maybe we'll do it again just because we don't care. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Just to spite everybody. Right? But no, I think it would be fun to do it again and, and pit, like, Intamins against each other or, I don't something. know. Something, yeah. Something else. BMs that would be fun. Except you couldn't put Velocicoaster in the in yeah. air at all because Except they would just automatically win. a bonus... Uh, our podcast is available on Podbean. I'm still in the process of uploading episodes. You will get a bonus episode where we debate B&M. That was actually our original pick is we had B&M. However, we had some technical difficulties. The audio is fine. However, we had problems with the video. So unfortunately, I have to scrap that episode. So we're considering it the lost episode. But if you want to check it out, it will become available on Podbean. Uh, go check it out. It will be available now. Wow. That's special. Yeah. Fancy. So bonus content. Yeah. You can put a link down in the like the yeah. description. So while you're shopping go for t shirts, yes. you can go listen to the, the Podbean episode. And let us know what you think. Yeah. Yeah, tell us all about it. Well, thanks again for watching and uh, until next time, this is X Scream Thrills. Bye.